fewer than nine people are hoping to run against David Schweikert in the first congressional district, including longtime political figures in Arizona and even a former news anchor that includes a relative newcomer to politics, Connor O'Callaghan. He joins me now to talk about what's going on with that race and his attempt to win this Democratic primary. Thanks for coming back on. Just full disclosure, we've had you on before, but we had to cut that interview a little bit short, so we're making up for a little bit of that time. So thank you for coming back here. And, you know, my first, you know, question for you, this is a very crowded field. Uh, how do you maintain, you know, uh, run and win a primary without going too far to the left in Democrat politics, because you're going to be facing a moderate, a more moderate general election in that first congressional district, because that is a very much a swing district. I think Biden won that district in the presidential election a few years back by a very narrow margin. Um, and so they may not be the general election may not you know, gravitate toward towards the kind of message that could win you a Democratic primary. Sure. Great question. And thanks again, Dennis, for having me back on. It's always mm -hmm. great to be here. So we're trying to run two races at once here. The reality mm -hmm. is we have such a late primary here in Arizona, you know, August primary. By the time ballots come out for the mm -hmm. general, you have about a two month window to really make your case to the general election voters. So we're running both in parallel path and our message is going to stay the same. It's going to be consistent. We need somebody who's from this district, who's for this district, who's lived here, who's raising a family here and who has the team and resources to finally win. And what separates you from some of the other other people in this field. There's some very longtime political figures in, the, in this race have got, you know, decent name recognition. You are a newcomer to this. Um, what separates you? Sure. So I think there's four serious candidates in the race. You know, two of those candidates are former Republicans. One was a Republican until 2018. One was a Republican until 2016. So there's different things in their backgrounds. One said they voted for Trump. One's had shifting positions on choice and on gay marriage. And I think people want a real Democrat in this district who can really take on David Schweikert and finally beat him. The third other serious candidate, I would say, besides myself, we just found out late last week is under federal investigation. We cannot nominate somebody under federal investigation. That is a recipe for disaster. Imagine a criminal indictment coming down in October. It would hand the seat back to David Schweikert for an eighth term. Yeah, you're talking about uh, Andre Cherney. I've not spoken to him about that, anything like that. So um, what do you think the key issues are for you in this race? What are you hearing from voters in this district? So look, I think in CD1, particularly in the general election, it has to start and end with the economy. It's a small business driven district. People want to know that the economy is working for small businesses, that the tax code works for small businesses and the government's really fighting for them. I think on a national level, people really do care about abortion rights. They care about the crisis at the border. They care about climate change and they care about common sense gun reform. We need to do all those things, but we can't ignore the economy. We can't ignore taxes. That's the reason why David Schweikert's been able to sneak by for seven straight terms. Yeah. So what is your, what is your uh, you know, position. What is your you know, your thoughts on the current the, the current Democratic president Joe Biden? If you had to give him a grade, um, a traditional letter grade, how would you grade the administration so far? So I think you asked me this last time I was on. I yeah, gave I'm always interested. I gave in the president an A minus. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. I, I, you still I, had an A minus. I would still give him an A minus. Look, okay. I think he did a much better job than the last guy did. He got inflation back under control. Unemployment's at historic lows. If you look at unemployment among minorities, it's the lowest it's ever been. You know, gas prices are back down. Mm -hmm. So is there work to be done? There's always work to be done. The economy can always be better, well, but I, I think he's done great. I'd say that a lot of people would say there's still a lot of work to be done, particularly when it comes to immigration. He just recently shut down the Lukeville port of entry. Um, the governor has said that doing that accomplished almost nothing. Um, what kind of grade do you give him on immigration? So look, the crisis at the border has been something that's going on for two decades. And sure. I think we need to take back the narrative from the Republicans, this whole Biden open border, Democrat open border policy. There is no open border policy. That's nonsense. The policy hasn't changed meaningfully under Joe Biden. Yeah, we no longer rip kids apart from their parents. We no longer put people in cages. It's something we need to address. The, most of the Republicans have shown zero interest in actually addressing this crisis. It's going to be up to us, to Democrats, to get it done. It'll be a priority for me in Congress. And what's that priority mean for you? Um what do you think solves this problem? How do you solve this where 20 years of other efforts have failed? Yeah, so I think to your point about 20 years, I think we need to look 20 years out. So we need to look at some of these countries like Venezuela, where we have a large flow of migrants coming from. We need politics and foreign policy that goes far beyond one congressional term, one presidential term. We need to work on economic development in those countries to stop the flow of migrants coming. We need to work with our counterparts in Mexico to do two things. One, we need to better patrol the southern border of Mexico, which is much smaller than the U.S.-Mexico border. And then we also need to handicap and, and really take down the car 
cartels because they've made getting across the border as easy as getting an Amazon package. Yeah, well, let me uh, ask you then a final question then, um, and then we got to get going. But what about more security at the border? Where are you, like, you know, take, take you know, maybe building more walls down there, sending more, uh, you know, troops to the border. What about those kinds of steps? We have to secure the border. I grew up here in Arizona, border state, and my family spent a lot of time in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. I think building physical barriers for numerous reasons is almost impossible to do coast to coast. But we have the technology where we can take out Iranian terrorists with drone strikes from the sky. Mm -hmm. We can read license plates with satellites. We can put our technology and our brain power to work, have very secure virtual borders, and give the Border Patrol the resources they need to effectively control the border. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry that it's so brief this time, but uh, thanks for coming back and uh, chatting.